Okay, here we are now. <clears throat> this is my wine has been sitting in this for you know about 10 or 11 days. It was ready days ago. I just didn't have time. So this is my winemaking video part four. We're, we're bottling. So what are some things you're going to need? Obviously bottles. So right there, <clears throat> right there, I have <clears throat> excuse me, 30 or 31 bottles, something like that. I, I only have 30 corks, so it doesn't really matter, but I know I at least have 30 there. Uh, a sanitizer with all your siphon, bottling wand, all that kind of stuff siphoned, or um, sterilized. Ultimately, that's what I'm going to use to sterilize my bottles, which I'll show you when I'm doing it. Got wine, corker. There are much nicer corkers, like uh, floor models, but that's what I have for now. 30 corks, pitcher, and then you know obviously I use star sand or you can use Ido 4, but I'm going to go ahead and siphon some um, star sand into here and then I'm going to soak my corks and stuff like that in there. So at that point, at this point, uh, let's go ahead and get started with the process. Okay, you can see now I've uh, hooked up my siphon, all this stuff together. And the other thing I usually do is, once I do this, I'll take this other end and I'll siphon some sterilizer into these. And I do that for two reasons. One, to sterilize the hose, and the other to get sterilizer in here. So, that's basically the reason why I do that. So, let me just empty the uh, this hose a little bit. Let me get this bucket just a little bit higher. Just so I can get these hoses cleared out a little bit. Otherwise it's hard to, uh, if they're all bunched up, it's kind of hard to clear them. Alright. There, now you can see it kind of emptied this. Well, you know, I think it actually started to siphon. <laughs> All right, hold on a second. Let me get these hoses cleared out, and then we'll start filling bottles. Okay, now all I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and get my sterilized... Uh, whoa! I did not count on that. Wow. Okay. Let me get back to you on this one. I think I'm going to have to carefully siphon some wine out into one bottle, and then I'll start this again. Okay, I just had to break away for a minute. Um, my uh, carboy was too full, and I couldn't get the siphon going. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking bottles, shooting star sand in them, and then letting them drain out. So I've got a bunch there that are clean, and these are all the ones I still need to sanitize. So, but I'm doing an X amount of time, so here's some bottles I've already filled. So, so what I do basically is just grab a new bottle, put it in here, and then once this one gets up high enough, and so what I usually do also is I uh, add a little bit more, just so it's a good, you know, uh, just below the cork, and then I start my next bottle. Once I get, uh, you know, I'll probably do like this, I'll probably do about five bottles at a time, and then start the whole process over again. So I'll just show you filling up one more, you can just see all the star scene coming out. So right before it goes over, I pick it up, let that star sand come out and then just kind of push on the side a little bit. Okay, then I grab a new bottle and repeat. So I'll be back with you. And one more thing I meant to show you guys is I've, I've got all my corks in star sand. It's not so much to saturate the corks, it's more just to sanitize the outside of them. So now I'm just going to show you uh, cork in a few bottles, you know, as I still got those going. And then we'll go from there. 
Okay, so the way my corker works is you basically just slide the cork in here, okay? And then you put the top over, and then you just apply pressure down. And there you go. There's corked wine. So let me do that again. So you put the cork in here, put it over the bottle, and push down. So that's all there is to it. Then you can see the wine, you know, is about an inch below the cork. So I'm going to go ahead and keep filling bottles, and then I will uh, show you when the whole thing's done. Okay, so I'm still filling bottles here. These are all the ones I have sanitized. Still got the corks in here. Still have four more bottles to do. The other thing I wanted to show you is, you know, I basically tip this up too, just to make sure I get as much wine out as possible. And then here's what's done so far. So, so far there's 15 bottles to go, so I still got 15 to do. So I'm just still filling these up and then uh, when I'm all done, I will be back with you to show you the final product. Okay, well, there you have it. This guy's empty. You know, if you look, I, I may have been able to squeeze out one more bottle, um, but I just didn't want to take the chance of it getting really cloudy. So I went ahead and did my 30 and called it good. So there is the finished product. So let me go ahead and grab one of these. And I'll just show it to you. I mean, you can see how clear this is. You can see the book through it. And, you know, this should even clear up even a little bit more over time. So you can see the pictures, everything through this. So this wine is definitely very clear. So again, you know, I uh, I highly recommend doing this because again, you know, this probably cost me oh, I think this kit cost me probably fifty-five, fifty-six dollars somewhere in that area. Then you take corks into account and stuff like that. I mean, you're talking, let's say around sixty dollars for this Pinot Grigio kit, and you end up with thirty bottles out of it. You know, thirty seven fifty mil bottles. So when it's all said and done, you're only talking two dollars per bottle. So you just can't beat that. And like I've said in my other videos, this stuff is easily as good as any ten to twenty dollar bottle that we've ever bought of Pinot Grigio, easily. And I, personally, I've never bought anything more expensive than that, so I can't compare it to forty, fifty, sixty dollar bottle of wines, but. And also, uh, I think when this is all said and done, um, let me take another picture of that. I'm going to uh, make some red wine too, you know, in the next month or two. Maybe by then I'll see if I can't get a better video camera so that I can take better shots of all this stuff for you guys. Um, but again, there, I just wanted to show you this is so this is my wine making video part four. I hope you guys enjoyed the series. series. And uh, cheers. Make some wine. Okay, so like I told you guys, that was my part four series. Let me grab one of these bottles. So like I said, you know, these things are nice and clear. And to be honest with you, last time I made this kit, I immediately put a bottle in the fridge. And uh, we tried it a day later. And with this Pinot Grigio, while yes, it does mellow out and get better over age, it was excellent uh, right after bottling. It's a little different with red. Um, red, it's probably not a, not a bad idea to let it age at least a good month before you try the first one and then even longer for more. But with the white, uh, man, it was fantastic right away. Um, and the other thing we found is we went through these pretty fast. So for the price, it's not a bad idea even a weekend if you can start another batch. Um, because if you run out of this and you don't have any more, you have to wait a whole another month 
just to make another batch. So it's not a bad idea to uh, make a couple kits at a time or stagger them by a couple weeks. And uh, but anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed the series. Um, you know, please leave any comments, questions, anything like that, and I'll answer it. So and like I said at the end, cheers and go make yourself some wine. It's it's very easy.